Equine Code. I am Santiago Tobón. I hope that today's topics will be put into practice in order to improve the well-being of our horses. Today, we will talk about the accessories we used to ride our horses, better known as horse tack. Also, about a material that may possibly replace the traditional bedding of horses in the stables. We will also see the proper way to brush down horses, and we will get to know the case of a mare who had an accident and unfortunately became blind. Ever since we domesticated the horse, we saw the need to design horse tack accessories that were put on these animals to allow us to make use of them in different activities. Even from these early times, jump to today where we use horses in sports, work, recreation, ranching, etc. For horses, horse tack is the group of accessories that make the ride more comfortable for the rider or makes draft work easier. They are considered the horse's work clothes. To talk a little about horse tack, we traveled to the city of Cali, and there we spoke with a person that is dedicated exclusively to the handling and maintenance of these items. <laughs> Albiero Grisales is the person in charge of the saddle warehouse at the Cali Country Club. He has spent more than 16 years in the world of horses. I have worked with horses for 20 years. I began, like everyone else, learning and working with horses in a wide variety of contexts. I have gone through different stages, working with gated horses, jumping horses, and from there I started to learn about saddles, horse tack, and what you need for jumping, what you need for dressage, also what you need for gated horses. The length of time I have dedicated to this activity has helped me to form opinions about what should and should not be used. And since the field is very broad, you need various techniques or various work tools, and there are many people who do not know what to do. This has led me to manage a storage warehouse dedicated to horse tack. Here, there are 288 saddle storage spaces, which contain traditional saddles, English saddles, training saddles, jumping saddles, Spanish saddles, Argentinian, Australian, of every kind. Since the club has 288 stables, we are required to have a large storage volume, double what is needed just for the horses, since we also store bits, saddles, and blankets. We have more or less some 600 snaffle bits. Many people do not believe that there there exist many different kinds of saddles, but with the passage of time, we have learned to get to know them, such as the Australian, the Spanish, the Portuguese, saddles that people here don't believe exist. In here, we also have the equipment that is geared towards jumping and dressage horses, which are the riding disciplines practiced at the country club. For jumping, we have different types of bits, hoof guards, a type of gel pad that many people do not know about. We also have equipment for the dressage horses, such as different kinds of bandages, wraps, blankets, bridle tools, also known as the bridle reins and other equipment. It is indispensable to have good maintenance of the equipment and thus avoid causing injuries to our horses. For the maintenance of all of the bridles and headgear, we have to take into account that every horse is like a person. Their gear is like their clothes. That is, each one has its own head covering, its own blanket, its own saddle. Everything is personalized. For this, we have to have proper maintenance of its bit, as well as its bridle, its blanket, and its saddle. For the bridle, we have to take something very special into account, 
very sacred, which is that the bit, or bit guard as they call it, it has to have maintenance every time you ride the horse. It has to be washed with water. You have to do some maintenance to it to make sure that there are no traces of saliva or traces of uneaten grass. It has to be left completely clean, completely, as if we were going to use it again. And the bridle is washed first with water to wash away the horse's sweat. After that, we use a little bit of soap or hoof oil, as many people call it, so that the head can be bridled again and the whole thing stays lubricated. Subsequently, we move on to the saddle, the saddle that has been used, meaning that the saddle has already been sweated on. So what you do is the same. The saddle is wiped with a small damp cloth to clean the horse's sweat. Afterwards, we wash with glycerin soap and to enhance its protection, we apply moisturizing creams that are commercially available for headgear maintenance. We continue with the padding. The padding is what goes between the saddle and the horse. It always gets sweaty after riding. The first thing you should do is to put it out in the sun to let it dry. And after two rides or after two consecutive uses, wash it so that the padding will be clean again, so that it doesn't catch germs and so that it doesn't grow fungus. From there, we go on to the wraps and splint boots, as they're called. And likewise, we shake off the dirt and sand. We wash them and put them out in the sun to dry. Afterwards, we pack them up and everything stays really organized. In the first block, we met Albiero, who spoke to us about the horse tax stored in the warehouse of the Cali Country Club. Now we will get to know a little bit more detail about this equipment and the inventory that Albiero is in charge of. How does he track it, given that it has a lot of gear belonging to different owners? One of the jobs that we have here is the identification of the different types of horse tack. Since we have more or less 300 saddles and many different kinds of tools that are used for equestrian exercises. The mode of identification is that they are numbered. Every saddle rack, which is what it's called, is numbered and each number is assigned to a club member and the horse's name is linked to the club member. The method we use to identify the saddle and the headgear is by color, by the kind of bit or the kind of bit guard. We differentiate the saddle if it's dressage because each saddle has its own distinctive look. We note their respective measurements and with the passage of time by observing them, taking them in and out, you learn to know which belongs to which club member, what it's for and for which horse. That is the way we track such a large volume of items. There are many occasions club members tell me, change the bit, change the bridle. So just by looking at them, you know what they're going to do. This is one of the methods of identifying what is here. Here's another item we have, the wraps or splint boots, which are used for dressage and jumping. That's what they're used for, this type of equestrian sport. We have bandages, the bell boots with protective gel. You don't see them in any other equestrian activity only in the question activities of jumping and dressage. Among the few oddities we have here, we have gated horses, trail riding horses, which use a totally different type of bit guard. I almost forgot a very important part of what we have here polo horses. They use a totally different bridle and head harness. Their saddles are totally different, but you also have to do regular maintenance. Even though they are different from other saddles, they have their own maintenance procedures since their gear is different from what is used in jumping and trail riding. This topic of horse tack is too broad. There are many items ranging from familiar equipment for riding and horse protection, but also there are specific gear items used in horse taming, leading the horse, training young horses, for transportation, etc. Now, let's get to know a material that's being used in equine operations as of late to improve the comfort of the horse. It is used to replace the hay bedding that is most commonly used today. This material is called EVA fiber. 
Santiago Jaramillo has belonged to the world of horses from a very early age. Today, he is a zootechnician who works on equine podiatry and blacksmithing. The EVA is a copolymer compound. Its acronym translates as ethyl vinyl acetate, and it is a very workable material. It is heat malleable. It is 100% waterproof. It does not foster the growth of bacteria or fungus. It can be used in many different ways, and depending on the amount of air that is pumped into it, you can manipulate how hard the material gets. Around horse installations, the EVA has many different uses. It can be used on floors and stables, as well as in horse trailers. Such as in protection for the walls when you have aggressive animals, or animals with behavior problems that tend to kick the walls. Also, it can be used in post-surgical or recovery areas and as protection for work animals to put them on their back or below the saddle to protect them from their work materials. De los materiales. The durability of the material is quite variable depending on how it's used. At the moment, there are stables with EVA floors laid down two years ago that are still in perfect condition. Also, there are EVA saddle pads that are more than two years old, which are also in perfect condition and haven't had to be changed. The good thing about this is that due to the characteristics of the material, it can be easily cleaned and washed. After getting to know what EVA is made of, some of its uses and characteristics, Santiago Jaramillo wanted to tell us a little about the colors, cleaning, maintenance, and how he began to use this material in his installations. EVA can come in various colors as different as children's foam. But in this case, in horse installations, we started with a black EVA for the floors. Because of the vision of the horse, we realized that a black mat like this can create a type of vacuum effect and the animal has difficulty entering its stables. Then, thanks to a colleague's recommendation, we changed the material to green, making it easier for the animal to enter their stable and get used to it. It is important that when you use the material, it should have very good drainage under the sheets that are placed on the floor. Because when you don't have good drainage, you begin to accumulate liquid under the sheets, and then it will begin to smell of urine and feces. We should always have very well-drained beds. In this case, we have some beds that are composed of dead rock, large rocks, a smaller grade on top, and a finer grade on top of that, giving it better drainage, and it prevents these liquids from going directly into the soil. EVA began to be used on the floors of the installations here because of the problems we encountered when buying rice hull or wood chips. Or, in some cases, we also used sugarcane fibers. So, we wanted to provide more comfort to the animal with a cleaner bed, because we know that sometimes these materials come with wood residue and splinters that can hurt the animals, and it can be dangerous for the horses. So, when you install the EVA, since the animals are used to having beds made from other materials, you have to give them time to adapt to this new bedding material. You can't just install the material, because often the animal will refuse to lay down on it, even when they're very tired, creating subsequent problems for the animals. In this case, we began to help them adapt by putting wood shavings on top of it and we gradually removed the bedding until the animal was used to the EVA.
We have learned about EVA fiber and about horse tack as well. Now, let's watch something that will help us to maintain the well-being of our horse in our equine culture segment. Lena Arenas got started in the world of horses many years ago, and she is currently a horse riding instructor. The grooming of the horse is very important both to socialize them and to keep them beautiful. For this, we use a curry comb, a brush, and a hoof pick. It is very important to clean the hooves every day because the inside of the hoof can fill up with wood shavings, dirt, and small rocks that can get stuck and cause them to limp. So we start to curry or rub. We begin rubbing from front to back. We always start from front to back as a safety measure. We rub in circles to remove all of the debris from the bedding, the dust, the shavings, all of the debris that it has. I rub as far as the muscle reaches because if you rub further down, you will bother the horse. Then go up to the shoulder, the hip. As we can see, she was playing out in the paddock and she is very dirty. We rub as far as the muscle extends, in places where the curry comb won't cause much pain. After he is rubbed with a curry comb, we begin to brush downwards so as to wipe off all of the dirt that the curry comb dislodged. It is very important to clean this area of the girth. We almost always forget about it, but that's where the strap for the saddle goes and debris here can cause chafing. The curry comb also dislodges all of the hair that the horse has shed. Sometimes when there is a change in the weather or when the weather is cold, they get a little hairy, so the blade removes all of that. Now we see that the horse initially was covered in grime and dirt, and now it looks shinier. We removed all of the dirt. This is what we call a dry bath, which has to be done daily. If you want beautiful hair, do it daily. It's important to clean the tail and the mane with your fingers. We don't do this every day because if we brush the tail and mane every day, we end up pulling out too much hair. We only comb them when we are going to do an exhibition or a trail ride. Afterwards, we're going to clean the hooves. When we clean the hooves, we check to make sure that the hooves haven't turned soft because of excess humidity in the stable. We make sure it's not emitting bad odors caused by fungus. Additionally, we make sure that there are no foreign bodies lodged in the hoof. Pieces of wood, rocks, glass, bottle caps. It's very important to perform this whole process both before riding the horse and after riding the horse. It's also a way to remove the sweat. It is a way of thanking the horse for working for us, for taking us places, for letting us enjoy him. It also helps them recreating and that has a break also when rest when they enter the stable. It's beautiful to see how this blind mare is always taking care of her young and how she obeys her caretaker. But first, let's get to know a little about the sport of polo. The origins of polo have not been definitely established to date, but it is thought that the sport originated in Persia. Cavalry units trained their elite riders by playing this sport. This is a sport in which two opposing teams of four players each, while on horseback, try to move a small wooden or plastic ball to the opponent's goal, which is formed by two posts. The ball is driven by a long-handled mallet. It was while playing polo that this mare had an accident, which caused her to lose her vision. Next, William Dominguez will tell us about this mare.
William Dominguez is the administrator of a farm. His experience with horses is little, but he has learned enough to take care of these animals. I am the caretaker of this farm here. My experience with horses consists of what I have acquired here, next to Don Andres Berrio, who's the owner of this farm. My experience with horses is limited because my real strength is in sugar cane. This mare is a polo mare, a very good one. She had an accident playing polo. She crashed with another horse and she was left blind. They did the proper treatments, but she did not recover her sight. From then on, she spent a lot of time in the stable, and afterwards, we put her together with a stallion to breed. And afterwards, we put her out to live in a pasture until she got used to living in a pasture. She knows the area already. She knows where she is. If you try to get her out of the pasture, she will refuse to go. She only leaves when someone calls her and walks beside her and she will follow you. Otherwise, no way. She does not leave her area. She is a very intelligent animal, always looking out for her foal. If he wanders off for a moment, she starts to call him back, and the times when he would disappear, when he goes far away, she gets desperate and goes to look for him until she finds him. The cattle ranchers wanted to get rid of her, kill her, but the boss loves horses a lot and he did not allow it. So from there, his idea was to give her a better life, to live better, and she became a broodmare. These episodes helped us to better understand some factors to keep in mind to improve the upkeep and care of our horses. We learned about the care and maintenance of horse tack. We got to know about a new material that can be used in multiple places inside equine installations. And we learned about the proper way to rub down a horse every day. We also saw an example of the unconditional love of a blind mare towards her offspring. These are all ideas that we should consider and keep in mind when it comes time to provide good care of our animals, if what we are really after is to secure their well-being. I am Santiago Tobón, and I will see you in another episode of Equine Code. <laughs>